get out of here, so we've got to pump off this thing. It's actually a Bertolini pump, not a solvent. The uh, shape and manifold design on the brass heads was very common for a solvent pump, but, yeah. but after class inspection, it was actually a Bertolini pump. Made in Italy also, they're another manufacturer. They're typically um, blue. And you can see there's a rub mark there on the PDO shaft on the universal joint here. Power takeoff goes in there through the pump. You see it rubbing through there. We've got some more hose rubbing on the side of the um, brass head of the pump. So little things like this that goes wrong with these sprays because of vibrations all the time of the water that makes them rub through on each other. It's actually a well, depending on where you look at the tank, full there is 3,400 litres. So I'll probably vary how much um, water this thing holds, and 3,300 litres there, so... I reckon about, probably to the boom, be 3,500 litres this tank. Not 3,800. That is actually for rinsing the pump out too. So yeah, it has many features. These uh, big vats. You're supposed to tap a hose under there. The taps and so on a suction, you can flush the pump out instead of uh, going back and to the depot and filling and flushing your tank out that way because that just takes a little time. It's got a Riker die hard hose, this is a really good pressure hose. And the control modules are made by ARAG Ribera, made in Italy, 12 volt DC. They're your solenoids. And that does your, that's your chemical half in there. And the pump itself was actually quite loose. This is what pays to keep this sort of stuff regularly maintained. That's typical of Bertolini, that. So that's actually a Bertolini pump, not a solvent. That's another Bertolini pump there. That's just a very old model from the, uh, I think it's from the late 70s, that one. Very uh, worn out, that one. That's an air bladder, has a diaphragm in there, a disc, a cup. And um, that keeps the output of the pump smooth instead of it fluctuating. If it fluctuates, you know that um, air bladder's gone. Bit of a dry run. Oil was good. SA 30 day takers to the brim there at max pressure, so that's, that's right, there's no um, problem with the oil there. The main problem is. Uh, bolts that were loose from the factory and they bolted these uh, plates here and clamped them on tight or well, whoever um, made this spray vat didn't tighten those plates up all the way because these things, these are um, bloody tight this is one of these which ended up twisting nearly broke it trying to get it off and you see the vibrations here cracked the plate there cracked it along there made the holes all over and the damage is done to the body, the block of the pump. You see all the wear, the vibrations. Taking a fair bit of metal off there. That's alloy, just all worn it away. That's what it's supposed to look like. You can see how much of it's missing. So this thing had some play in it. With this thing pumping water, it had a lot of vibrations from the water um, hitting and going past the valve, creates a lot of vibrations in these sorts of pumps. ID tags missing. I don't know what a uh, model this is. I have to Google it. So you see the hose is rubbed on there, taking some brass off. I've also got these bearings here. They came out of here. Closer inspection, that's the inner bearing. Doesn't sound too nice. Not to Japan, so Japanese bearings are quite good. That's the original ones. And there's the outer bearing, look at that. Chemicals gotten past the seal, started off the grease, got old, wore out, and started getting hot. Therefore, cooked out the seal, allowed dirt to get in, had a flow on effect from there. Should be able to still turn this. It was still turning. Yeah, not very nice. Yeah, that's one shagged bearing. So t I think the, this uh, vet was bought brand new, so probably about seven years old. So it's about due for a major service.
here, so knee bearings, van, the knee seal, knee bearing there for the gearbox, this one we can get a replacement, you're supposed to put a rod through there with a puller and that rod goes through and pushes onto this, uh, onto the end of that shaft and pushes it off but I was a uh, half asleep at the time. I came home yesterday and did this and forgot to put the bloody bolt back in and decided to pull it on itself and broke it. But lucky we can get in one of those easily. So here's it. So to fix this I think what we may have to do, this is if the customer um, wants it fixed or not, just put uh, steel sleeves in there, a pipe, a steel pipe water away in there, a sleeve, then put washers or something, just to try and take up that play. And there's a, we can weld that and fix it that way, but depending on what the customer wants. So this, this is all fixable, but there, these bolts weren't done tight enough and there was a bit of play and this whole pump was moving the whole time that, um, the vet was uh, operating. Yeah. little uh, pressure release here, like a pop valve for an air compressor tank, that goes on there, and that limits the uh, output pressure. It's just calibrated to 40 bar. So if we get any more than 40 bar, this pops and water shoots out of here. Otherwise it can. I have seen these head bolts get broken from the pressure. They're you know, pretty intense, so you got to make sure these are in good working order. So this pump here yeah, basically just needs a stand. That's pretty much it. There's nothing much else wrong with it. It's just most of the, uh, the wear we've got to fix. And the filter itself, that's a suction side. So the pump sucks through there. It's a ball valve there, and that sucks in here. It's a fil main filter, that's pretty clean. That does need to be cleaned, and that can come off and you can score a hose on there and suck water from a river or a channel. So traditionally in Italy, there's had a, um, you had this set up and the hose comes off here and sucks up a um, channel or a river or a creek, and just fills the tank up that way. But we just use a big hose like over there over here in Australia, we use a, just a large hose method to fill it up. These are rarely used as a filling point. And that's actually a jet, uh, I think it's called a jet mixer, I showed before, it's like a pressure washer nozzle. And that water um, cuts in through the chemical, the powder, because some chemicals are powder based, and it helps dissolve it. See. So, 860 PSI gauge goes up. Normally I think you go between here, between 2 and 400 PSI. It's a typical uh, yeah, head pressure on your nozzles on these things. That's a nice and loose on some we've serviced in the past. These are all completely rusted, solid with our chemical. With some farmers, they never ever bother washing their sprays. And I've seen some pretty, uh, some pretty bad ones in, in, the, in the past. The pumps I've seen, have, um, in some cases they run them low and all, and run dry fan below, so they don't really uh, bother fixing it till the season's finished. And there'll be that much bloody water and chemical, especially chemical going through there, and that just destroys all possible lubrication. Just ruins the oil and, yeah. Basically a reciprocating mechanism, piston cylinders, or failed pretty catastrophically anyway. But there was one case we had to make one pump, one good pump out of two because it had the crankshaft actually smashed off four of the conrods and chewed up the crankshaft. The only salvageable part was the uh, alloy body of the pump. The rest is just pretty much ruined. The uh, heads and everything are okay. So we just had to change the um, internal set of crank and the pistons of another similar pump and put them in this one to repair it. But yeah, so far it's in pretty good nick. So. Yeah. These bolts here, always going to make sure it's tight because if these bolts are loose, the vibrations you know, do a lot of damage. And yeah, that's pretty much the repair job for this one. It's just uh, preventative maintenance, really. So, thanks for watching.